What goes on, beautiful people? I'm Brandon Yavis from Vora Motors, bringing you a guide to maintain your ride. This video is for all my touring riders, and we're going to show you step by step how to replace the rear fender on your touring. It's a bit of a complicated process, but fear not, we're going to go in depth and we're going to show you everything you need to know. So let's pick up some tools and let's get right into it. As you can see here, our old fender has had a rough life. The wires are frayed and some of the plastic is broken. It can't even bolt down properly. Go ahead and fold your touring and right behind the front wheel, you'll see this plate. It's held on by four screws in each corner. You're going to use an Allen wrench to remove all those screws. Go ahead and shimmy the cover up the wires, keep it out of your way. And then once inside, you can begin pulling out all the wires and the controller. Some of these wires won't be connected, and that's okay. Just be mindful of that. And also, take care not to pinch, bend, or break any wires. Now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the power. Find this yellow wiring connector here, and coming out of both sides should be a black wire and a red wire. Gonna go ahead and pinch both ends of the connector and just wiggle it apart. And your power is disconnected, and your scooter is safe to work on. Go ahead and locate this black wire, and out of the end of it, you'll find four wires, a yellow, a blue, a brown, and a green one. And at the ends of those wires, you'll find these black connectors. We're going to go ahead and disconnect these connectors. They have a little tab up here, and you just pinch the tab and pull them apart. That tab is to lock them in place so that they don't come undone. Here we go again. We're just going to pinch the tab and pull them apart. Now we are going to separate the wires from the connectors. Go ahead and hold the connector in one hand with the lock facing the ceiling, and in the other hand with a pair of tweezers, stick them inside the connector just above the prongs. There should be a just enough wiggle room to fit those in there. Then you can wiggle them up and down a little bit. It's important to be careful here. Once you've done it right, you'll be able to remove the wire from the end of the connector. Essentially what you're doing is unlocking the wire from the connector. The locking mechanism is on top of the wire, so using the tweezers, you're able to unlock it and pull the wire through. We'll do it on the other ones here as well. Same thing, insert the tweezers, wiggle them around a little bit, and then pull the wire right out the back. Remember to fit your tweezers just above the prong. There should be enough space in there for you. Only do this for the cable that we're working on. The colors of the wires will be blue, brown, yellow, and green. Any other wires and you're messing with another component of your scooter and you could risk damaging it. Save these connectors, we will be using them later. Now we're going to remove the old fender. To cut your fender wire, Come in with a pair of wire cutters or a razor blade. There are two wires back here. Make sure you're not cutting the motor wire. The motor wire runs to the motor while the fender wire runs up and inside the fender. The fender is held on with four screws, two on each side. So go ahead, grab yourself an Allen wrench and start loosening those up. As you can see, this fender is broken, so I didn't have to remove all four screws to take it off, but again, you will want to remove all four screws. Here we have the old fender. These two screws here are made to keep the black wire from rubbing the wheel, but obviously those failed. That's why we're replacing it. With the new fender, double check that these two screws are holding down the wire, and then you can tug on the wire a little bit and it won't come loose. 
This will prevent the wire from rubbing on the wheel and this problem from happening again. All right, let's go ahead and install it. To start off, we're gonna tape the four colored wires from the new fender to the black wire of the old fender. We're gonna be using electrical tape today and you wanna make sure that you get these taped down nice and tight. You don't want them to be able to slide and you also don't want the tape to hang up. You'll see why we're doing this in a minute here, but it's very important that all these wires are taped down. You'll know you've used enough electrical tape when you can't see any more of the colored wires. You should see just black wires and black tape. Again, it's crucial that your tape is tight and neat. Underneath the scooter, where the wire goes inside, you'll find some of this glue here. This glue is used to keep moisture, dirt, and other debris out. Using some scissors and a razor blade, go ahead and start picking away at it. Be mindful not to cut the motor wire. As you can see, I cut a little bit of the old fender wire, but because we're gonna be replacing that, it's fine. Cut away as much of this glue as you need to, and don't worry, it's not that necessary to the successful operation of your scooter. The goal here is to be able to move the wire in and out of the body of the scooter freely. You don't want that much friction. On the front of the scooter, go ahead and locate the fender wire. Remember, it's the wire with yellow, blue, green, and brown wires coming out of it. You're gonna very carefully pull that through the scooter, and when you reach the portion that we used electrical tape on, it will help if you go ahead and just push that through with your other hand. And you'll notice on the other side that as you pull that wire through, it'll bring the new fender wire through. This is the easiest and most efficient way to get the new fender wire through the scooter. Otherwise, you'll have a really hard time trying to feed the new fender wire through the scooter. Once the electrical tape portion of the wire is at the other end of the scooter, you're okay to stop. Looking at the back of the scooter now, I realized I made a mistake. Ideally, you wanna run the fender wire right in front of the wheel. This is an easy fix though. All we have to do is remove the rear wheel. Start with a wrench and loosen up the wheel nuts. There's one on each side. Then use a pair of pliers to pull out this washer. There's one on each side. On the other side of the scooter, you're going to turn this bit counterclockwise to loosen up the brakes a little bit. Then with an Allen wrench, go ahead and loosen up this last screw over here. Make sure you support the wheel with your hand underneath it. You don't need to completely remove this screw. Just loosen it. You'll have enough room to slide the fender wire on top of the axle and in front of the tire. Now you can see just how the fender attaches to the scooter. Before moving on, let's make sure that our rear wheel is fully attached. Go ahead and slide on those washers. They'll only go on one way. And then tighten down the nuts on each side of the wheel. Don't tighten them completely though. I recommend tightening this little screw with your Allen wrench first. Get that all the way tight, and then you can fully tighten the wheel nuts. To adjust the brakes, go ahead and spin the back wheel while also spinning this little barrel adjuster. Once you feel your brakes start to make contact, go ahead and loosen this barrel adjuster until they stop making contact, and then your brakes are adjusted. To reinstall the fender, use the same four screws from earlier and just screw those right back in. We recommend doing the two furthest screws first just to keep your fender in place while you do the other two. Once all those screws are in, tighten them up to make sure that the fender doesn't move. As you can see here, we have a little bit of excess fender wire, which we don't want. Go ahead to the front of the scooter and pull that wire through just a little bit more to take up some of that slack. Don't take up too much slack though. We still want some of the fender wire in the back so that we can zip tie it to the motor wire. 
This keeps everything looking clean and helps keep the wires from rubbing against the wheel. We decided to use two zip ties and go ahead and cut off the tails when you're done tightening them. At the front of the scooter, go ahead and unravel and remove the electrical tape. I ended up carefully sliding mine off. Now we have the same four color wires as before. All we have to do is get them back into the connector. You'll notice that each of these four wires has a little tab sticking up. This little tab is what locks the wire inside of the black connector. For the purpose of this demonstration, we're always going to keep this tab facing the ceiling, and we're also going to keep the locking tab on the connector facing the ceiling. With the connector in one hand and the brown wire in the other hand, go ahead and insert it into the left hole of the connector. The wire will find where it needs to go and that tab will click when it's locked in place. Once you hear the wire click into place, you should be able to tug on it lightly and make sure that it's in there nice and snug. You can take a look at the wide end of the connector and make sure that it's sitting where it should be. Next you're going to take the green wire and the green wire is going to go in the right hole. Again, feed it through with the locking tab on the wire facing up and the locking tab on the connector facing up and eventually it'll click into place. Give it a little tug to make sure and then admire your work. We're going to do the same thing here with the other connector and we're going to go ahead and start with the blue wire. Again, both locking tabs facing the ceiling. Just stick it in until it clicks and it'll be locked in place. For this connector, the blue wire goes into the left hole and the yellow wire is going to go into the right hole. Make sure you give everything one last tug to make sure it's all secure. Not that hard, right? And it looks pretty good. Next, go through all the wires and find the connector with the white and the orange wire coming out of it. Plug in the connector you just created with the yellow and the blue wire. These connectors only go in one way and make sure they lock. Next, find the connector with the red and black wire sticking out of it and connect that to the connector with the green and brown wire. Again, they'll only go in one way make sure that they lock together. Here's a handy wiring diagram I drew up for you. Make sure that the red wire is connected to the brown wire, the black wire is connected to the green wire, the white wire is connected to the yellow wire, and the orange wire is connected to the blue wire. If you find yourself having to redo this step, Go ahead and use the same tweezers from before and the same method as before to remove the wires. But once you've removed the wires, go ahead and bend that metal tab up so that they will lock in the connector when you reinstall them. Now you can go ahead and reconnect your power. The connectors for the power are yellow and they each have a black wire and a red wire coming from them. Just slide them together. At this point, it's a good idea to test your new fender to make sure that the light works and that everything is wired in correctly. Go ahead and start up your scooter and you should see the red light glow on the fender. Everything looks good here, so we're going to turn it off and continue on. If you find that the light does not work, go ahead and retrace your steps to make sure you didn't miss anything. Next we're going to stuff the controller and all the wires back into this tiny little space. This may take a minute and it might take a little bit of fiddling. I like to start by inserting the controller. Make sure that as you insert it, you're not pinching any wires or putting strain on any connectors. Then you can just stuff in the rest of the wires and get them as tight as you can. Go ahead and shimmy down that cover, and I'm going to go ahead and get everything lined up so that we can reinstall it. It's very important that you make sure that the cover isn't pinching any wires as you install it. Now hold still while I go get those screws and an Allen wrench. 
I like to start by installing the screw just above the wire. And you're not going to tighten this all the way down. Just get it started so that the cover stays on while you install the other screws. Then go ahead and tighten those four screws down. And I always like to test everything one more time. Go ahead and start it up. And it looks like we are successful. So go ahead and give yourself a pat on the back. This isn't an easy job to do. And that's all there is to it. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, make sure you give it a thumbs up down below and share it with all your friends. And if you have any burning questions you want to ask, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below and one of our team members will get back to you shortly. This has been Brandon Yavas from Vora Motors wishing you a safe ride. Take care.